Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to be discussing two new rules. So, uh, the first rules that we've learned have been modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, and disjunctive syllogism. Uh, so, in this video, we're going to learn two new rules, one of which is called addition, and the other of which is called uh, simplification. So, let's take a look at addition first. So, addition says if you have p, then you have p or q. So addition is if you have p, which is the one and only premise, then the conclusion is you have p or q. So again, um, this doesn't follow our normal uh, three uh, three line um, standard like we've usually been doing. So uh, the other arguments we've presented have had uh, two premises and one conclusion, whereas this only has one premise and one conclusion. So again, we assume that we have true premises and a false conclusion, just to show that this is valid. P is true right here, so it means P is true right here. But this goes under the assumption that the conclusion can't be false with P being true, and so we get into a contradiction by assuming the argument's invalid, so the argument has to be valid. So P says, if you have P and P is true, then P or Q is true. And the logic behind this is that for the OR operator, only one of its disjuncts needs to be true. So if one of them is automatically true, whatever else you add to the OR operator will also be true. And you could literally add anything. I could add, for example, uh, P or, uh, let's see, Q and R or L and X and this would be true because p is true so as long as one of them is true you can attach whatever you want on the other side and it'll still be true so that's how um, addition works and I'll just scoot this down a little bit and I'll write addition right here to show you that this is a rule uh, the next rule is called simplification and simplification is uh, I'll write it down simplification uh, actually, before I go on a simplification, I want to give you just a, a quick verbal example using the addition rule. So, my name is Brian, or I am the present king of France. That statement's true, because even though I am not the present king of France, and that doesn't, uh, there is no present king of France, right? France doesn't have kings. Um, even though I'm, I'm not the present king of France, and France doesn't have any present kings, it's still true, because... Part of, uh, one of its disjuncts that my name is Brian is true and so as a result that's true um, so uh, a math example going with the math tradition I've been using is either 2 plus 2 is 4 or 2 plus 2 is 5 that statement's true right because 2 plus 2 is 4 so it doesn't matter that 2 plus 2 is 5 because uh, 2 plus 2 is 4 and so that makes that argument true um, so now that we have that out of the way let's take a look at simplification Simplification works in a similar way. It says if you have P and Q, and then this is a uh, one premise, one conclusion argument as well. So we get our conclusion indicator, and it says if you have P then Q, then you have P. And the logic for this works in a similar fashion. For the for the and operator to be true, they both need to be true individually. So if the conjunction of both of them is true, then each of them individually is true. So my name is Brian and I'm 22 years old is true. So if that statement's true, then the statement my name is Brian is true, right? Because the whole, the whole conjunction of those, uh, the whole conjunction of that wouldn't be true if my name is Brian weren't true. So that's how simplification works. So we're gonna be taking a look at some problems using uh, these two new rules, addition and simplification, and using the four rules which we've already learned in the next video. 